All right, and we're rolling. <laughs> we finally got it. Awesome. Well, appreciate you being on the channel. Welcome to Work for Avocados, a channel all about surfing, skating, and being stoked on the small stuff. Uh, this week we have Chris it's Ganau, right? Yes. Chris Ganau. All right. Awesome. Uh, coming all the way from Germany, uh, fellow surf skater, great history in sports, and love to have him on and appreciate him being on today. I thank you for having me. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, it's going to kind of do a little collaboration episode, a little half and half. And I'm doing something for him. He's doing something for me. And appreciate you guys checking out each other's our channels. Uh, you can follow him on YouTube at No Superman Chris first and foremost. Uh, it's a bit it's a bit crazy right now. So I, I struggle with naming. So the, the website right now is just No Superman dot com. And then I just on Instagram it's No Superman Chris all one word. And on YouTube, it's now my legal name, Chris Ganau. <laughs> so, <Gotcha>. um, <laughs> yeah, naming is my is one of my biggest issues. I, I, I struggle to find a name, and then I struggle to stick with a name. But um, yeah, that's 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 it for now. <laughs> It'll all come together, I'm sure. Yeah, well, that's what's up, man. How long have you been surf skating for? So that's a funny story. I um, started surf skating, I think, in. 2005, yeah, 2015, yeah, I think 2015. It's um, and it was there wasn't really the carver or carver wasn't as big of a thing as it is right now, and I think Quicksilver just came out and I saw this um, one ad with Leo Fioravanti, um, the Italian surfer from the World Tour. Back then he wasn't on the World Tour, and he skated like a Quicksilver C7 truck knockoff, and um, I thought like oh. I had a surf trip coming up and like one of the earlier surf trips to Spain and I was like oh that looks like a lot of fun and it looks like it might help me um, progress in surfing and that's how I got like hooked on surf skating to be something to be done um, as a landlocked surfer. <laughs> I imagine so. It's, it's so addicting like you can just have a wave in your driveway basically anywhere you go with the surf skate it's just freedom. It really is. Yeah. Like the, all the videos they put out and then when Carver like put all their videos and trailers out, it, they make it look super awesome. Like even if you don't know how to skate or surf at all, they make it look like something you just want to do for the heck of it. And yeah, and then also like, I mean, for these days now, with, like there's so many programs out now, I think it's just for me a great um, like practice tool as well when I can get into the water, which is um, unfortunately my my reality, my life right now. <laughs> I imagine you got to put some work in to find some waves around where you're at. Yeah. Uh, there are a few wave spots in Germany, right? Like nothing like that's actually solid, right? As far as like the sea spots. Yeah, no, no, no. Like um, I would basically say um, Germany isn't surfable at all. I mean, we have like the, the few, few islands in the Northern Sea, but if I wanted to go there from where I'm living or where I am right now, if I wanted to go there to surf, it would almost take me as long as jumping on a plane to go to Cornwall, which is for me, like because of plane fares and tickets, usually the cheapest and then also fastest way to just go to Cornwall, um, which is crazy when you think about that it's, I can faster go to England and surf, then I can like drive up north and have shitty surf. So yeah. And so, and so you go south. Is, that's what I do in the south. I go to the like in the south of Germany. I can um, go hiking and snowboarding, but no ocean. Yeah, that's funny. It's pretty similar here in Florida, actually. Like, I live in North Florida, which is like one of the most southern states. But I've only surfed probably maybe 15 miles north of my house. But so, but southernly, like I've gone to so many countries to surf but never like a few hours north just because it, it's just cheaper you know it's it's cheaper to fly south most more often than not for me oh that's like, crazy i could take a surf trip to california or i could just get on a plane and go to puerto rico like two hours away for like 150 dollars <laughs> we have nicer people less people in the water um better culture better food <laughs> yeah Puerto Rico, it was, it would be for me. <laughs> for sure, for sure. That's how it winds up working out. 
Well, dude, what I think was like really cool about your story, which um, I found through looking through your blog last night, was that you played in the American Football League in Germany. Yeah. What? So, so sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. It's um, it's funny because um, I so I started my my like my children like my my kids day sports career um, started in karate. And I did that fighting for the national team until I was 19 years old or so, which I was when I was like, okay, I um, like I can't do this anymore. I, I had to cut weight um, for all the fights, um, which was basically just dehydrating. So I need to, I needed to lose like eight or like up between seven, five to eight kilograms for every like weekend and every bigger competition, which would be like almost 20 pounds or so. And um, you basically just lose that by dehydrating. And my kidneys didn't like that too much. So they basically said, dude, s stop it. <laughs> um, or otherwise we'll stop you. And um, then that was the end of my karate days. And so I went on to med school and two days, in, like two years into med school, I was like, I miss like competitive sport. I, I need to do something. And that was 2000, um, 2014. And I checked, I always liked American football. I always followed the NFL and I was like, American football, that would be something fun to do. So let's see if the city has a team. City had a team. Um, I played there for three years. It went way better than I thought. And then the next city, um, they have a first league team. Um, it's called the GFL, German Football League. And they contacted me, asked me if I wanted to play first league. And then I did that for three years. And it's, it's a great thing. Like they say outside of the Americas and Canada, and then Japan, um, that it's the most competitive football league there is, um, like worldwide. And we get tons of American import players. That's what we call them here, import players. And it's just a fun time. Like it, it was a, a lot of fun um, to be doing that kind of thing. That's awesome. Is, was there like, I mean, I guess there was a scene around, around it somewhat, but is it, was it like noticeably different with such a, I don't know, to put it like a minority sport? Because most people think football, it's always soccer. Yeah, yeah. Like American football isn't very big in Germany. Um, I'm, I'm, like, I'm glad enough to. Um, I was playing for a team that had at every game they had like three thousand fans at every game, um, which is for American football in Germany a lot. Like um, even in Berlin, which is the capital city of Germany. Um, like the Berlin team, I mean, it's not liked very well. They still play playoffs every year, but they get um, at their games like between three and 400 on a good day. Um, so it's like very dependent on where you're playing and how established that team um, is. And I mean, yeah, it's a small city in what used to be Eastern Germany, like when Germany was still divided. So it's somehow crazy that they have such an affinity for American sports because they also have an ice hockey team that also gets a lot of fans. So That's awesome. um, I guess awesome. I was just lucky. <laughs> I, I had um, my first year there, by the way, I played second year. I played with a quarterback from Florida. Oh, and, no way. Yeah, his name is Trent Norvell. And he has a friend that lives in St. Augustine and that goes to the skate park. I see you skating in your YouTube videos. What? Which no is way. Funny. Do you know what his name is? <laughs> Sorry, what? Do you know what his name is? Uh, I, I, I will add that. <laughs> um, I, I only have him. I, I only follow him on Instagram. So, um, and the phone is recording right now. But I, I, I will be able to tell you when we're done. <laughs> That's awesome. It's such a small world, man. Yes, it really is. <laughs> what was the, tran the transition from the football league? So, I was just like, the problem was, I, I, I'm in med school. Med school is closing towards an end. And then, like, football games are, of course, always on weekends and like it like took a toll on my relationship so i'm together with my girlfriend for almost 10 years now oh, and wow. the day before i lived in namibia it will be our 10th anniversary and we are basically living on a like or we basically kept living a weekend relationship so we only would see each other on the weekends and yeah it was just like time to um, like switch that to uh, like being full time together in the same place and then, like, I mean, it was an easy exit for me because in my last season, 2019 was the last season I played, um, I got hurt and um, I needed sh um, shoulder surgery. 
so that ended my season early and after that in 2020 didn't have a football season because of the pandemic um, so it, it's like only semi-professional sport and um, with the raging pandemic just getting started semi-professional sport in Germany weren't allowed to play so yeah they're like one season ended with an injury the next season didn't happen and um, now they're about to restart the 2021 season and yeah that was an easy exit for me to be honest like to get away from everything um, right that's the one good thing for me with the pandemic it gave me an easy transition out of american football that's definitely like a clean clean hand wipe on to the next thing that's awesome it worked out like that at least i mean not that you got injured by any means but sometimes it gets messy for sure yes <laughs> so the uh you're heading to namibia for a volunteer project right yes What's uh, uh, what's the project all about? So this project is, it's also like a crazy story um, how I got linked up to that project. So the I have a friend who is working right now as a diplomat in Namibia. I only met that guy um, in 2017 on a 90-day trip to Bali and I met him on Bali surfing. Um, turns out he was German and from Berlin. And Leipzig and Berlin, the city I am right now in, my university city, um, and Berlin is only like 200 kilometers apart from each other. So um, we meet across the globe and then we um, like get, a well, get along pretty well. And a year ago now, yeah, it's already a year ago now, he goes to Namibia to work um, as a diplomat. Um, basically, he searched out a country where he can work in his job in. Um, and still be able to go surfing like he always looked for that he's a bit older than us he's 34 already already I mean but that's I mean it's still eight years six years and so um, he's there right now and has a great connection to basically the only quality surf camp there is in Namibia Namibia isn't still very known for surfing other than Skeleton Bay and the pros going there in winter when it's firing other than that Namibian surfing is still very very very, I mean, there's probably not more than 15 hardcore surfers in all over Namibia um, who would consider themselves surfers. And so in 2018, I went to Namibia with my girlfriend, like before I even knew the guy, um, like the diplomat guy, his name is Patrick. And before he even knew that he was going to go to Namibia. And I was there and I talked to this guy, his name is Oli, um, just like very briefly, 10 seconds or so, I just asked him about a surf spot. And he told me in that conversation, like, yeah, you know, surfing in Namibia, it's not that well known. I'm trying my best, like with the surf camp and everything to get word out there. And then when I got back to Germany, I remembered, yeah, I always wanted to start a blog and with Namibia, I have something to write about. So I just wrote a general, um, like a general blog article about surfing in Namibia. And within the, in, within the article, I just mentioned his, um, like surf camp as basically the only surf camp. Um, and now three years later, um, in April, Oh no, it was in, I was in February already. In February, um, I was thinking about, well, what do I do now until my final examination, which is only in October. I have all this free time left. What, I, what do I do with it? And I called Patrick, said like, can I like stay with you for a bit? And he said like, hey, Oli, the guy who owns the surf camp that you wrote briefly about, I mean, it's only like 2% of the whole article is. I just basically just mentioned him. And... Um, he says, yeah, he has read your um, like blog post as well and they are starting this project. It's like a super cool project. Um, you want to check that out or maybe just do an interview with him for the blog. And I was like, yeah, I mean, I can always talk to him. And so I talked to him. We talk about the project with like not having me going there in the back of my mind at all. Um, and at the end of the interview where he told me all about the, the project, he just says, hey, Chris, um, so what are you doing right now? And I told him, yeah, like there went something wrong with med school. I have off until October now. And he just said, okay, like, um, would you want to work 90 days as a volunteer here? And I was like, yes. Yeah, of course. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, way too good of a chance to pass. And like, it took a bit of luck and being in the right places at the right times, um, a few years down the line um, to just get the chance. And I'm like, it's, only 17 or 16 days or, now, or, or so now before I leave and I'm super amped to go down there. It's also the winter in the hemisphere approaching, so waves should be um, pretty good. That's awesome, man. 
You never know like what seed like you plant might grow into something a few years down the line. Like the most passing comment you might not think anything of winds up being something so life changing like a few years later. Yes. It's so it's so funny too because I, I I watched your YouTube videos and then one year ago I started skating and I don't even know if you remember that. But I started regular skating, just street skating, because I thought like that's what 12 year old me always wanted to do. And then on my first day or so, um, I um, like finally I was able to do an ollie, which I was never able to do at 12 year old me. And two weeks later, I like I updated that progress to Instagram and just like saying do day whatsoever of skating progress. And then I, um, I discovered that when doing an ollie, I need to push out as well with my front foot to level the board out and do that with a kind of karate kick motion. I uploaded that video saying blah, blah, blah. And then you, um, you wrote a comment underneath that. We didn't even know or talk to each other ever, but you wrote, dude, that's a high ollie. And I answered, <laughs> what the fuck? I just watched, like I literally just watched a YouTube video of you like two or three weeks ago or so. And now you are commenting on the, under my Instagram post. Um, and that was the first time I ever heard, a, heard from you personally. And yeah, I mean, that's, that's like one more thing. Like you never know what seeds you plant. I mean, what are the odds that at that day you are looking for skating hashtags and co commenting on like a random post that you liked and um, now we are sitting here talking to each other. <laughs> For real. Exactly. You never know how it's going to work out. That's wild. So are you bringing, imagine you're bringing your surf skate with you down there, right? Yes. Um, Oli said like there's not a lot of surf skates in Namibia unless you want to go to South Africa and buy one. So he said, Chris, bring everything that you can pack um, with the like, um, weight limit that you have. And I said, like, okay, I'm, I'm trying to bring two, at, at least the one, but maybe two surf skates with me. That's awesome. Imagine, I mean, you don't need like parks and stuff. It's as long as it's, as long as it's there. Yeah, they have, they have concrete. That's all I need. <laughs> it's funny that you mentioned, um, there's something you mentioned earlier, which like about carvers and that they're, they make it look really easy. They make yeah. it look like you can just get up and go. And it's funny because I've been trying, honestly, for a decade now to get sponsored by Carver. Whoa. I send I send videos to Carver all the time. Like every like like nonstop. Never get an acknowledgement. I think I got a shirt like eight years ago. But it's funny because I'm always like, why? But I think you hit it on the head, and it's because it's like a different market. It's a different demographic like they're trying to capture. I think there's that's the cool thing about surf skates going on right now, is that there's finally this revolution of different kinds of surf skates. Like you mentioned that video, I, I don't know if it was recording earlier, but Chris mentioned um, a video I uploaded about eight, eight years ago on a surf skate. And <clears throat> for like seven years, surf skates were like not cool. At least where I was from. Like I was always like the carver guy. Like I got, I got good enough where like I got respect in the park but it's so funny seeing this explosion of surf skates right now from my perspective, because for so long it was just completely ignored, completely ignored. Now all of a sudden there's a, now all of a sudden there's a black market, surf skates are going for like $400 each like out in Thailand. It's crazy, yes. man. It's, it's good. I really think, I don't know if it's the time if it's just a pandemic, like bicycle, like bis like cycling took off in Germany as well again, like everybody bought bicycles and bicycle, they have like a big um, backlog of orders for like racing bicycles and everything. Um, but yeah, I remember even when I bought my surf skate in 2015, um, like you couldn't go just to a, to a skate park. Like if you came up there with, they basically said like, what's the dude with a longboard? doing it yeah. on a skate park. <laughs> exactly. Um, I can only imagine how that is in a more core skating scene um, in, this, in the States compared to what it is in Germany. I mean, they, I mean, like where I was at, where I'm at in St. Augustine, like it's pretty chill. Like, I mean, I definitely heard comments like that a lot, but yeah. it got to the point where I could carve and go faster than most people there. So they really couldn't say much <laughs> at that point. But like, I can't do like flat ground tricks, but like I can carve a bowl pretty well, so kind of got my respect in like that sense in like this yeah. weird like side pocket kind of 
Did Carver, um, did, did, did you ever ask them why they aren't considering you? Did you ever get like something like word or written back from them ever? The, about eight years ago, it was probably, what was it, eight? Yeah, probably eight years ago, I sent one of the videos I had done and they were like, oh yeah, like we'll put it on our website and they never did, but they like had sent a t-shirt at the time, which I was super stoked on. Like I'm not like knocking them on that. But it was like for the next like eight years, like I kept sending videos because like it was something really cool that I wanted to be a part of. Not necessarily like, oh yeah, I'm sponsored by Carver. Like, but it was something like I really enjoyed doing. Like I, I've loved surf skating for like a decade. Like I saw these, I don't know if you've seen them on Carver's site, like the, the wave pools that they have, the concrete ones, where they make yeah. them specifically just for Carver's. I was like, dude, I would do anything to skate one of those like, That's why I want to be on the team. Like, I don't care about anything else. Um, yeah. But it, it's kind of become, like, this joke amongst my friends, honestly, because every time, like, Carver puts out, like, a new video, it'll be just something, like, super basic. And then, I'll, <laughs> and then I'm, like, grinding a nine-foot bowl, and I'm like, why won't you sponsor me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think, I don't know, man. I see maybe, maybe you, get, you get another shot now with, like, how everything is moving right now. But I feel like, like, Carver people, like most of them, are either professional surfers, and then like with the, like with the with the other brands, they of course um, like search out professional surfers because that's work that that works for marketing. Right. And then yeah, and I, I mean I don't know. I feel like um, as much as I like my Carver skateboard or my like that's wrong. I like my Carver trucks. Um, I don't necessarily necessarily like the deck, but I like the Carver trucks and but i feel like i don't know what's what I, i don't know what is it with them because there's a there's an instagram page um carver skateboards germany too and i link them in whatever i do um i mean it's basically free um advertisement for them and they never repost anything exactly they follow exactly. people they they follow small accounts i mean i'm a small account i'm just about to hit uh, 1000 instagram subscribers i'm sitting at 999 so i'm Like I'm posting shit, stuff that looks good, like st stuff that is surfing wise good. Like I don't upload stuff where I look um, like even remotely as if I wouldn't know what I do or I, or I wouldn't tag them and then that. But so whenever I tag them, like I answer people's question that are followed by them. Like people that are followed by them ask me for, hey Chris, like what's your tip on skating the pump track? And they like they comment on everything I do. And then there's no acknowledgement whatsoever from Carver Skateboards Germany. And None. Yeah, it's getting frustrating. So I can only, and it's for me, that's only like half a year or so now. So oh, dude, you are going through this for eight years. years now. So I, I feel, I feel you. I feel for you. It's because it's the same thing on their uh, their Instagram page on the US. Like I'm not saying like I need, I don't want to like, I have to make the team. But it's like you said, like they repost so many smaller accounts of like, hey, look at this video of this kid in this driveway, and you're just like. Bro, like, I'm, <laughs> like yeah. you have to actively be like trying to like ignore me at this point. You know what I mean? Yes. But it is what it is because honestly, it's inspired me to like keep pushing it further and further. And now I'm just like, whatever. Like, I do surf skate videos, not necessarily promoting Carver anymore. Like, I'm done giving them free advertisement. Yeah. I mean, I guess we kind of are right now because we're talking about them on a pod my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think Damn so too. <laughs> At the end of the day, is there's nothing if if the brand isn't even like, I mean, they really don't get. I think, and maybe they don't have to worry about it right now because like ordering is going like crazy. Everybody like doesn't matter if you're Yo, um, um, Smooth Star or Carver. You put out a new like, <laughs> there's new boards out and they're sold in a minute. It feels like, um, but there will be a time again. When surf skating isn't as like popular as it is right now, like right. all the all the kids from Thailand, um, just like kids here in Germany did with their street street skateboards, when it isn't hip anymore, and like um, Korean and Thailand pop stars aren't posting videos surf skating anymore, you will probably lose 95 of your customers, and then there comes the point where they wish they would have stuck to the core surf skating people who always enjoyed them, who will keep pushing out saying like, hey, I enjoy my cover. Um, I think it's the best truck out there. 
you should get a Carver. Um, unless, I mean, there's this, I don't know, you probably know him from YouTube, right? Shane, Shane Lai, Shane Lay, um, yeah. Canadian yeah. surf skate dude. Yeah. And I think he used to skate um, Carvers, but it seems like Carver didn't do stuff for him as well. And now he seems like he's usually only on his smooth stars. And then like this new brand, Spice Gate, seems like he, they picked him up. Because he's doing advertisement for Spicegate now, and I yeah, I, I mean he's got sixteen thousand he, he, subscribers. Yeah, he doesn't come from a surfing background, um, but he surf skates pretty well, and he's like adjusted to that, like to that um, audience and population of people who just want to surf skate. They don't want it to practice for surfing, and I mean he has forty or fifty thousand views on a lot of his videos, so. Carver is missing out. Carver, if you are watching this, you are missing out. <laughs> I know, that's like four or five people. Um, did you see that thing about, there's another surf skate channel, uh, Surf Skate Love? Yeah, and I talked he to had him put out that letter. It's like really like eye-opening, because like, I mean, it's not a perspective that I'm coming from for sure, but basically if you're watching this, um, there's another surf skate channel who put out a letter to all these surf skate companies, basically being like, you guys need to look past you know just this being for surfers because surf skates are so fun yeah. like it really should be for everyone and he made the point that they don't really like explain things very well which i i agree with him in that sense like there's really no explanation no simple concise answer where they're like a c7 feels this way a cx feels yeah. this way on like a surf skate so there, there are a few points that like, I, under, I i definitely got where he's coming from Yes, me too. I wrote, I like, I read that letter and I was like, yeah, that makes a lot of sense, especially for somebody who isn't surfing. And I think like back then nobody was surf skating. And now I feel like most surf skaters aren't there because of a surfing background. I think they're just there because it's tons of fun and way better than just a regular cruiser longboard. Oh, for sure. I mean, I've, I've sold probably four carver boards like in reference my friends they like they tried one like i want one of these and i don't think i think one of them was a surfer but the other three yeah. weren't even surfers they were just like this is so much fun yeah it's just it's like they build a great thing um hopefully they market for the now <laughs> yeah i know right great product we're just mad at the marketing and yeah <laughs> we just want some recognition <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that's cool, man. Like another thing, like I really liked about your blog that you were watched, um, that I was seeing was you're really big, and from your videos, is you're really big on the analysis and the technical component of your surf skating and your improvement. Um, and coming from that sports background that you mentioned earlier, it's cool that you have that. I don't want to say a professional sports perspective in the sense that like surfing's not professional in that, but yeah, like. Yeah. Yeah, more formal we'll say man. there's there's one thing i don't really like about the surfing culture or the surfing world and that is that they, i feel like and I, i've experienced it on the surfing subreddit um, there are people out there who basically think or feel like and it's okay if they feel like that but they don't have to put other people down like surfing should be just surfing you should be out there you should be struggling um, like surfing isn't easy surfing is hard and it's okay that it's hard because it keeps the crooks away and like I mean even in the professional surfing world when you hear the podcasts of Kelly Slater or like even before that like Mark Okilupo and everything and they're saying basically when you won an event and you didn't drink until 3 a.m. in the night um, the, the like the night before um, like the win wasn't considered a win like it might as well just been a second place I heard Mark and oh, what's a Brad Gerlich, like, now he came out with the WaveKey program, um, so I heard a lot of podcasts from him. And when he said that, he said, like, you could win an event, and he, ha he has won four events in his, um, like, in his lifetime, in his professional career. And he said, if you didn't party with the guys the night before, then that win was considered, like, yeah, not worthless, but less worth. And, yeah, I feel like, I mean, I don't know why um, so many surfers out there have such a big problem with, like, coming it from a technical anal analysis and like also accept coaching um yeah but because i don't know without coaching i wouldn't have gone or coaching myself i wouldn't have gone anywhere i would still be struggling to catch a bro like an, an unbroken wave right uh, then i don't know yeah 
a little rant right there, but that's that's a part of the surf culture I hate. No, for sure. It's a uh, it's kind of like a pack mentality, and I think I completely agree with what you're saying. I think a large part of it comes from if you're born in an area with really good waves. Like I can say, coming from St. Augustine in North Florida, that like there's towns north and south of us that get way better surf than us. Like 30 minutes north, 30 minutes south, like it's always breaking better. Here it's like, it's fun, but it's super casual, you know what I mean? And I'm, I'm really yeah. thankful for that in a sense because it's a very relaxed environment. Like there's very few spots where people are like, this is my wave or like everyone's trying to be Kelly Slater out there. Like it's super relaxed, but even, sorry, go ahead. Uh, I was just gonna say, which is funny because Kelly Slater came also from Florida. <laughs> So. He did. He's from more a better surf spot for sure. Like Cocoa Beach definitely gets better surf, but yeah, man, it's like you go you go certain areas. Like I don't know if I'd have the same outlook on surfing that I do if I was born in like Jacksonville, which is like a bigger city north of here. Like it's definitely like a bit more aggressive. Um, but I agree with you because I mean, even within that like relaxed environment, like you kind of get made fun of for certain things, like. As a surfer, like I longboard, so I get made fun of by shortboarders sometimes for being a longboarder. Not only that, I ride performance longboarders, which normal longboarders hate performance longboarders. Not only that, but I stand up paddleboard. And then I also have an inflatable stand up paddleboard, so it's just this like, people are always gonna hate that you just gotta do what, yeah. you, what you love doing. Just yesterday, um, I rewatched. The, and it, it fits in nicely. I rewatched the the, um, the animation movie, the animated movie, Surfs Up, um, with the penguins surfing. Oh yeah, with Rob Machado's in it. Yeah, and there's this moment, like in the very beginning of the movie, where um, like the the main character, main character penguin is called Cody Maverick, and he says something like, um, "I don't understand why everybody has to be this judgmental." Um, people say like, "Cody's just a bum. Cody's this. Cody's that. Cody's me, bro. Let me be me." When is that gonna start? And like when I was, that movie came out in 2007, I was 15 years old and I felt like, dude, he's, he's spitting truth. That's the words, I feel Not that. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm 28 and I still feel that just as much, if not more. Yeah, so, no, yeah. for sure, definitely. That's some, that's some solid words right there. Ah, it's all about the journey. <laughs> All in, just going and keep on going, no matter um, what happens or what they say. Um, I have lived through so many um, awesome and cool moments, which have led me to everything I've done, and then also going to Namibia. And if I would have just done med school, like people are supposed to do med school, um, like um, six years and done, and not stretch it out, like taking a semester off here, go traveling and everything. Um, I wouldn't have lived through all that. I would be right now already working for three years as a resident doctor um, instead of I'm going to Namibia, 90 days surfing, working with little children and passing on the stoke. So I think while there might be some people out there who think I'm doing it wrong, I think I'm, I'm doing most of the things right and I'm happy. I'm happy about the path I'm, I'm taking in life. Absolutely, man. You're definitely not going to regret that. I mean, you can always go back to, to doing whatever afterwards, but those opportunities present themselves like you got to go for it. They don't come all the time, especially when they seem so lined up like that. It seems almost like it was meant to be. Yes. I had a really similar uh, experience with how I got to Nicaragua is that I had done work away in volunteer programs for a few years and I wound up working at this one place called Playa San Diego in Nicaragua. And it wasn't like the most standout experience. Like it was good, but it was like in its infancy, it was like, in, it was the most remote place I had ever been to. So like it had just started, it was super remote. There wasn't like a whole lot to do other than surf by myself, like a half mile out with no one around for miles, which is awesome, but also pretty scary. Like on the Pacific yeah, Ocean yeah. when it's I like overhead. So I did that and I came back, did a couple other volunteer things. And a uh, quick side note on that, I wound up breaking a longboard and the owner's phone that first trip. So everything got cut short. So like I left and I paid for it, but like I was like, I gotta go home because I just spent $600 replacing things. 
And then a few years later, I make a post online where I'm like, I want to go to school for international business because I want to start my own hostel. And that guy that I worked for, who I'd broken his phone and his surfboard, was like, hey man, you should just come and manage my place out here. And I wound nice. up doing, yeah, I wound up managing the surf hostel out there for three months actually, for 90 days wow. also. A very similar experience to what you had. That's cool. That's like sometimes you just, um, I mean, this is YouTube where he calls it the serendipity we vehicle. You just never know, like you, you put it earlier, you just never know which seat you planted without maybe not even knowing that you planted a seat um, will um, like take you anywhere or will like to keep in that metaphor will grow into a beautiful tree of chances. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's cool how it works out. How did you get your name? Like how'd that come to be? The, the no Superman Chris yeah. thing? Yeah. Uh, uh, a very funny story. When I started med school, well, that's way too loud right now. When I started med school, um, and um, I did a little blog on Blogspot. Um, if you remember that, that was a thing back then, writing blog on Blogspot. And I did this blog about just like what it's like being a medical student. And I never got further than just like four entries. And it was more like journal kind of entries. Um, this was in 2012. And I was a big, big fan at the time, which is part of why I became a medical student, the, like this, the, the show Scrubs, you know, if you, with JD, and I don't know if you've ever seen it, but it's like a medical, um, like, it's a comedy show. Oh, yeah, okay, sorry. Yeah, it's called um, Scrubs, and it has this song as the team song um, from Laszlo Bain, I'm No Superman. Oh, yeah. So when I, when I, when I would write the blog, um, I was like, okay, I need a theme here. I need something. Um, and I ended every entry with like acknowledging, like I was writing in German back at the time, but I was still like just acknowledging at, at the end of everything. Um, like, and at the end of the day, there's nothing more for me to, than to admit to myself that I'm still no Superman. And then in 2019, when I started the website I have going now, um, I was just like, okay, I want to do a blog. I, wanted to, I want to write about stuff. But what do I name it? I have to get a property. I what do I name it? And I remember that I already had a blog once, and I had no um, clever man in my ear telling me, Chris, you should stick to your just your name. <laughs> and so I took what I knew and just called it no Superman dot com. <laughs> so that's how I got the name. Yeah, hey, it works. Yeah, it's okay. Like I, I, I was struggling with it now that I started the YouTube channel. So of course I'm no Superman Chris or no Superman.com on everything. So I was like, that's what the YouTube channel should be called. Um, but then like I, I've just now like two weeks ago, or so started this YouTube course from the YouTuber uh, Matt Vella, and he says like, yeah, I mean he has this check, like this check file if see if your name is scalable. Like, is it scalable? Does it attach you to your niche? Um, is it easy to find? Is it easy to pronounce and everything? And like, I went through that check and I, I checked I checked most of the boxes. But then I thought, I thought about Kale Broccoli. You probably know him as mm -hmm. like the, uh, like Kale Brock. And it, it's so funny when his channel was still called Kale's Broccoli um, versus now where he like in front of every video says, hey, my name is Kale Brock. I'm a filmmaker, blah, blah, blah. Um, I never remembered his name. I was like, oh yeah, the vegetable guy. <laughs> and um, now, since he turned into Caleb Brock, I, I know his name now. I mean, I remember his name. I, never, I was never able to do Caleb's broccoli. I was like, oh, he's the vegetable guy. And I was like, what if people feel like that about no Superman, Chris? Like, if that, what if that doesn't stick? And if you don't hear the story about, blah, I'm no Superman and I don't have that theme anymore, I was like, people, won't remember that as much as they will hopefully remember just the name if they tie it to the face. Yeah. So, yeah. How did you come up with your name? I always wondered work for, I, I, I do like um, that, um, like hang 10 avocado logo of yours. Um, I like it a lot, but how did you, how did you come up with the name? So I went to school after I went to uh, graduated from high school, I went and got my like basic two year degree. And then I wound up going to massage school. 
and I was a massage therapist. I spent eight months, uh, eight months doing the program and didn't do too much with it here in Florida. But when I decided to start backpacking and traveling uh, through Workaway, it was, it got me in everywhere that I applied to any, basically any volunteer place where I was like, yeah, I have bartending, I have a serving experience, restaurant experience. So it was really easy to get in. And then I was like, hey, I'm a massage therapist. And they're like, you can do that on the side and you can make money. So I wound up, after I found out about the volunteer program work away, I got about $650 together and I sold everything I own and I flew to Mexico. And my plan was to work my way down south to Nicaragua to get this job lined up in a place called uh, Surfing Turtle. And I had to wait a little bit because it was coming out of the rainy season and they didn't have a job lined up. So basically I had to make $600 stretch for three months. And <laughs> so I wound up like working along my way and then I was doing like massages sometimes for like, dude, like $7 an hour, like chair massages in Mexico, like, next to nothing but just yes. enough to like get gro I, I judge it by groceries for the week where i was yeah. like you know if i can get seven dollars like that's really nothing at all back home but here i can eat for a week so whatever i felt like it was like a fair exchange um and then i spent my last bit of money on the shuttle from guatemala to nicaragua and there was about a six day period where I was literally doing massages for food and for work. So I was like out of money. I wound up going into this hostel. Some girl like I met um, through traveling before was like, hey, we have a chair up here. Like if you want to do some chair massage. And then someone gave me an avocado as payment. <laughs> so that's how it wound up sticking. And I was just walking through Guatemala, uh, had an avocado my backpack and a skateboard and I'm just trying to make my way down to Nicaragua to start this surf job and it was a really freeing moment for me where I was just like I don't have anything but I know that I'm gonna make it down there and then once I get down there like it was a three meal a day job uh, I had that lined up for the next three months so I just wound up doing that in turtle rescue but nice. that was that in between period of really just selling everything I own and that last little home stretch where you completely run out of resources and you do whatever to make it happen to get to like the next point. And that was work for avocados for me. Nice. That's a, that's a, that's so much better of a story of how you got to your name than mine, which is why I changed it to my legal name. <laughs> Dude, I've had a lot of names in my life. Like this is the one that stuck the best, but like I've had so many nicknames It'll change. Yeah. You'll figure out what works for you. It's funny, like, in my town, like, I've known by, like, four or five different things, and you kind of, like, know the people by, like, what they call you almost. It's like, oh, that's from when I was over there. That's from when I worked over there. <laughs> <laughs> but the avocado thing is finally, it's memorable, so it's sticking. Yeah, it's very memorable. But whenever I'm out in the water, it's like, sometimes people paddle up and like, oh, are you the avocado guy? Or they just call me Avocados, like that's just my new name is Avocados. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I do like Avocados as well, um, which I think a lot of surfers or, or like surf audience -y kind of people do. Um, like you, you, are hitting, you are hitting a nerve with that name, I think, which is why it sticks. See, I mean, I never could remember Kale's Broccoli, even though I like Kale and I like Broccoli, but like work for Avocados just sound as if it does have a story behind it. Um, which um, it does now I know it and um, that's why I never had troubles remembering that somehow so good for you good Thanks. on you <laughs> I, I got really lucky with the with the name on it luckily it's never taken you know work for avocados.com was an easy ten dollars or whatever it was because no one's trying to buy it <laughs> <laughs> but it's cool I just got I actually just got that going now online uh, in the past week or so is work for avocados com and I'm starting to upload all my have my YouTube videos embedded on there I've got like all my merchandise up there now so it's it's pretty cool to see that next chapter of this journey take place like 
shout out to everyone who's bought something. We've sold over like $300 worth of merchandise over like in the past week. It's been crazy. Nice. Congrats on that. Appreciate it, man. Thanks. It's going well. Nice. I never made a single dollar or euro yet with any of my creative endeavors. This is the oh, first I time. I think just... Yesterday or so, yesterday or so, somebody, I set up the buy me a coffee page and yesterday um, somebody bought me um, three coffees um, worth of nine euros. So um, his name is Mark. I am not able to reach out to, like, it doesn't seem like he's on Instagram or he just doesn't want to be known. If you are watching this somehow, Mark, awesome. Thank you. Um, I'll do my best to deliver on um, the promise and like put out awesome stuff once I'm in Namibia. Thank you so so much <laughs> <laughs> definitely cheers to that for sure oh, coffee is always good <laughs> so what's the youtube journey going to be along the way are you are you have a frequency of like when you want to post like throughout this are you going to do just as it comes as you feel like each era ends so i initially um when i started now 13 weeks ago i was like i will post a video every week and in the second week already, like the first video was easy because it was like, hey dudes, I'm going to Namibia <laughs> and I'm like finally have something to tell, something that's like worthy of a YouTube channel. And then the second video, it was shit weather. It was just raining, just like it is right now um, for two weeks straight rain. And like the next idea was, of course, to do something surf skating because I do that a lot and it ties in nicely to the story and it's kind of a preparation for Namibia. And yeah, I was denied by the rain. And then I was like, dang, uploading a video every week, it's kind of hot. It's not as easy as people make it. It's look. hard, man. Uh, it is hard. Um, but yeah, I got something done. Um, luckily enough, with the Ombi Surf courses and everything, like the material I have there to like, put a video together. But yeah, the plan for now is to put a video out every week, like every once, at least once a week. And then hopefully when I'm in Namibia, I have so much content, probably more content than I will have for 90 days of uploading. Um, so um, I will like, seem so, like, let's see how fast I can go with the editing and filming process and everything. Um, but yeah, the plan is to at least once a week, hopefully like twice a week or so. So we just see what like um, kind of content is around. I mean, yeah, the surf camp is awesome. Um, they do like a very sustainable thing. They um, have a big garden, um, they harvest and grow a lot of the vegetables that they surf in the hostel. And then of course there's the project, then there's just surfing Namibia, then there's all the ideas that I don't know if I can deliver on them, but just all the ideas in, the, in my head that I'm having of like, um, like just raising awareness for what awesome of a place Namibia is, um, except for Skeleton Bay and just Safari. So like that it's actually a nice country to look at, even if you don't want to go to the three points where everybody is going that comes to Namibia. Right. The whole country is great. Not just the touristy spots. Yeah. So yeah, if that all comes together and I can find my filmmaker voice <laughs> to tell those stories, um, hopefully I'll upload a bunch, but we'll see. We'll say I don't want to um, like put too much stress on myself. Um, I don't promise anything, um, like put up false optimism. Um, I just don't know. I've, I'm not a filmmaker. I'm a medical student. So we'll see. <laughs> well, best of luck, man. I'm sure you'll do fine. Then it's all, it's all a growing journey. I'm sure you'll find plenty of inspiration along the way. It'd be cool to see yes. like the struggles, you know, like not just the good parts of traveling, which I think a lot of times that gets shown as just like, oh, great, 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 great. I mean, you'll think guilty of that in my edits. You're not going to see, like, I mean, how, how many times I'll miss a flight or something like that or something bad. Like, we want to show you the exciting things, but I think there's real power in the story of the journey, like the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yes. I think, I don't, I mean, that's, like, the one thing... I mean, I like Jamie O'Brien's vlogs a lot and he's like, like very surf niche. Like if you aren't a surfer, you wouldn't ever watch Jamie O'Brien vlog unless you just like the dude and like his energy. But I guess like um, a lot of people aren't watching the vlogs if they aren't surfers or like at least aspiring to be surfers. So, and then 
what 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 I think Jamie lacks a little bit in his um, like channel, and then the Nathan brothers do too, and also does Cora Rothman. Like none of them has a real story. It's just vlogs, and it seems like they've they've been going for so long now. Nobody is unless they like they, they tell the story of how they came back from injury, um, which was also I'm just guessing here not their idea, but the WSL did it with Billy Kemper, and they thought like. Wow, that's a great way to tell a story. I should do that too. I've been hurt before, which is okay, but it's just not an original idea. And it just seems like they all got hurt at the same time, Billy got. So I don't know. Um, like, I'm just throwing it out there. But I think that's the one thing they all lack. And then you have all the travel channels, like um, travel YouTube, like you said, they just put in like awesome hotels and I got this for free. I got that for free because I have 10 million followers on Instagram and like that whole world. And what they all don't do, at least from my perspective, is telling a story. It's just like they're just showing off and make it seem like they've put in a few helpful tips. But 90% of the video is just beautiful guys and girls sitting at another infinity pool um, doing stuff. And yeah, I, feel, made I don't it. know. I feel like there's a, a, like a lack um, in that realm where people should like move into i mean like the one the master of storytelling probably casey neistat um he has no niche and whatsoever like he's just awesome at storytelling that's why people watch his videos he has 12 million subscribers and he doesn't even produce video produce videos anymore but he always told a like a compelling story that you could follow along even if you aren't interested in him or the topic he's talking about at all People were there to watch it for the story and for him. But yeah, I, I went on a rant there, but... <laughs> no, you're <laughs> good. I completely agree. I mean, that's why I think a lot of it is because a lot of those guys, like, they made it. You know what I mean? Like, I think as, as a humanity, we like to see the underdog rise to the top. We like to see the whole thing go down. Like, Jamie O'Brien is like, he's Jamie O'Brien, like... Which is a, it's a blessing and a curse, you know what I mean? Um, and I think that's a, an awesome thing about like Ben Gravy's blog, vlogs is that he's always telling a story of some sort. You might think it's not like the most exciting story every video, but he's showing you like every step of the way. Like I think right now he's taking an RV from, uh, from New Jersey over to Waco and they're showing like all the skate parks hitting along the way, which is cool to follow along. And you know, years ago when he was starting his thing of surfing all 50 states, you had people emotionally invested in that. Like people are like watching the story along the way, which I think gives him like that air of credibility. Like you saw this journey take place and now it's on to the next thing. Yeah. But it's still a story in a sense. Okay, so the GoPro just died, but it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. All Thank good. you for your service, GoPro. Salute you. <laughs> yeah. Are you got any questions for me? Yes. Um, I really wanted to know. So um, that's why I dug into your channel earlier and see what was the oldest video ever you ever uploaded. Um, when was the moment, like apart from eight years ago, um, like I'm talking more your recent stuff, like a year or a bit, like now almost two years ago, I guess. And where was the moment when you were like, okay, I want to restart that YouTube channel or start like a real YouTube channel. And I want to, like, I want to do that. What was the, the main motivation or urge inside you to, to do that? You know, it's funny because it's kind of like what we talked about earlier. Everything comes full circle a lot of times and you don't even know it. And it was a guy who commented on one of the old surf skate videos I did. And it was probably like two and a half, three years ago, something like that. And he was just like, this is really awesome. Like, this is really cool, like what you're doing. Um, I don't remember the exact message, but it was something where I like, I looked into it and I was like, huh. Cause I had, I had a GoPro from traveling and growing up, like I had always wanted to do video editing. Like that's all I ever wanted to do growing up. I thought it was so cool, but I always had this like really crappy Windows computer. It could never like handle anything. Um, but I always kind of had a GoPro of some sort around. Like I never really did anything with the footage, but I had traveled around with it. 
made some minor edits from Nicaragua or whatever when I'd go just so I could have something to like remember my journey by. And then I saw that comment and I looked back at that video and I was like, oh my God, this thing has like 15,000 views, something crazy like that. And I was like, you know what? I should finally make the decision to put everything together. Like I was at a point where I could put some sort of uh, financial deposit down on a solid piece of equipment. I was living on the beach and I had the GoPro. So I was like, wanted to do something with the footage. And I had always wanted to get into filmmaking of that kind. I don't want to say like I'm making movies over here. So I use that filmmaking yeah. term lightly for everyone out there. Calm down. Um, <laughs> But it's something I always wanted to do. So I had done, I think the first one after that was the Hurricane Dorian, which was actually that newspaper that I mentioned earlier that appeared in Germany was we had this like crazy like flooding come through. Um, and I did a video on that. And I was like, I'm going to try to keep this going because I was watching, uh, you've probably seen him, Gary V. Yeah. Gary Vee is a huge inspiration for me and I was like you know what I'm gonna make the plunge I'm gonna do this I really wanted to do one video a week um, was it Hurricane Dorian it was either Hurricane Dorian the video or it was I tried to do it like travel videos I can't remember which one was which but either way I was just trying to do something every week but it started out with the travel videos and after five or six I was like, you know, this is like, all right, like people on my Facebook friends found value in it. But overall, I was like, I can't continue doing this. Like, I don't have enough going on. Like, I travel a couple times a year, but not enough to produce content on a weekly basis. Like, it was, it was me, but it wasn't me in my truest sense. So I looked at it, and I was like, well, what do I do? I ride my Carver all the time, and I surf all the time, and travel and the combination of all of it it's kind of you know you start with this big bunch of ideas and it eventually like narrows down into this fine point where you're like this is what it is like if you had asked me a year and a half ago like what my youtube channel was it's like oh like you know like i do my videos about like surfing uh sometimes i'll do trips and stuff like that it's kind of a jumbled not clear concise answer Whereas like now it's like surfing, skating, and soaked on the small stuff. Like I know exactly the target that I'm trying to do. Um, and I'm trying to break that. I'm trying to go broader, but within that same realm. Like doing the surf skate tutorial videos. I started doing that recently. I want to get more into doing that. Um, still having those like surf adventure vlogs. And kind of doing more lifestyle things still under that umbrella. Like I'm working on a video right now of stretching for 30 days and how that improves your surfing and skating. Oh, my light just went out, but whatever. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> nice. But just trying to trying to do something every week. Like like you said that weekly video is hard, but you really start digging for ideas, you find more than you thought you would. Yeah. Since I started like since I started the the, the, the YouTube course and um, like also the like the creative process it was so like it was so stupid somehow like i always enjoyed write, writing and i'm a very creative writer um, but when it came to filmmaking i always enjoyed filmmaking too i was just like you i put in i put together like i edited my first video in which i wouldn't call editing um, of me and my friends at 15 year old uh, 15 years old just like running through the city and everything on windows movie maker um, where yep. you could couldn't have audio track and you could only have one video Windows track and everything. Movie maker. So, yep. um, but yeah, for the creative process, somehow everything I know about creative process and storytelling, it just never s jumped to my mind that I should be applying that to the YouTube thing as well. I was literally the guy who was just like, okay, today I'm talking about yeah Namibia. I'm going to Namibia. So, um, like, just to get it out of the way, which was maybe for that first video, the best thing I could have done. Otherwise, I would have, like, put it off again until I'm in Namibia. Um, I just did what Gary Vee said. I pointed the camera at my face and started talking. And it was very, 
I mean, it's still unnatural now, but it, it becomes more natural with the time, right? Uh, where you don't feel like a, a stupid idiot talking to your camera or to your phone. Um, but yeah, and then I think now that I've started, just like I would for writing, scribble down my ideas whenever they come to my mind, like put them in Notion. Um, right now I have more ideas than I can produce videos. Um, like with everything, like trying to line up med school right now, and I'm leaving in two weeks, so I have to line up a few things. Um, and then I'm traveling, um, I can't do what I want to do. But finally, there are more ideas um, for videos I have than I can like put out and produce. And which is a nice thing to have because now I can sit behind my iPad and just like, okay, you have this, this amount of ideas, which one are you doing? And it isn't like, oh, I want to go surf skating, but it's raining. What the fuck am I doing with the channel this week? So um, that was um, the, like... Um, like freeing, a freeing um, moment to finally have some ideas. But I think it's just a creative process. When you start, like it's just you said, you, you, you don't, like first of all, it's, it's kind of hard to know what you do when you're not knowing what you're wanting to do, if that makes sense. So, um, yeah. Yeah, you don't know the path until you start walking it. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I just think it's, um, like in, it's just a good place to be in right now. I, th I, st I still think there's um, like a nice audience on YouTube for everything. Um, and yes, I guess um, like for you, you've been around for a year now. I've been around for only like three months or so now. And now you've just started like putting more of an emphasis on surf skating. And I think with you being such a good surf skater, you should definitely capitalize on that. Um, because like the surf skate, um, surf skate love, um, his name is Steve and he's basically putting in the perspective of I never knew anything about surf skating, now I'm just doing that and I'm taking you along for the ride so you learn to surf skate with me and that's a nice perspective to have but then having someone like you who isn't a professional surfer just putting out content, brand content for a brand just like yeah I've been doing that for a lot of time um, and you like my Instagram videos now here is me explaining how I do those things. Um, like I feel like, I mean, I don't know millions of surf skaters, but I do know a few. And I, I felt like your video of doing um, like that, that first thing that you did, like the tail slash, slide, grab, um, I don't know how to call it. Oh, the um, layback but, grind. Yes, and you doing that video was, I thought the best idea you had in a while with your YouTube channel, because for me, that was a signature work for avocados, Michael um, thing. Like I, um, you were the first guy I saw doing it. And then when I saw other people doing them, I, I, thought, of, I thought about you. I was like, hey, that's, that's Michael's trick. Um, so it's nice um, having you making a video about that, um, like showing how you are doing the trick. Because I think that's what a lot of people out there are looking for, um, even though they might not know yet that they are looking. Right, some they like get comfortable with the carvers and they kind of want to take it to the next step, which like I think is is uh you know it, it helps with everything and that's another thing that uh, Steve had pointed out in his letter was that competition is good and it's not necessarily like me infringing on your territory or like you infringing on mine. It's like we kind of all have like our own perspective on it and it's gonna evolve everything as a surf skate culture into a big melting pot. And that's how the future of the sport goes. Um, I'm really excited to see where it goes because it seems like we're just getting more and more awesome videos all the time. There's this one kid on Instagram who absolutely shreds and it, it's a, I think it's Toxa Surf Skate, T-O-X-A-S-U-R-F. And he's like, he's like seven or eight years old. And he, the stuff he does on a surf skate, it's like he's, he's on the water. Like I watch his videos to get inspiration. Like when he does his, uh, he does his coping slides. He is, does his back wheels. Like he has his whole front lifted up, kind of like a hash grind, but he's still power sliding through. And it's just such like a vertical wow. movement. It's so cool to see like the, the lines that he takes. I need to check him out. I think my biggest inspiration yet um, was a guy who came out of nowhere and then just exploded on Instagram. He's not on YouTube. He's from Spain and he works with guy? Yo together, Lowski Sessions. Yes, dude, he's sick. He's just, 
I think he has a heavy street skating background, um, like yeah. doing all the airs and stuff that he does. And he's also like he always seems like he always has been a surf coach too. Um, but him like putting those two things together, I mean, it's very very tailored to people who also surf basically. But I mean, I I absolutely like everything that he does, and he's putting everything out there for free as well. And it's, it's um, like wild what he does. Yeah. It's awesome. And actually, that was one of my huge inspirations and in learning the layback grind was because I had he had explained it. He did his like in bowl version, like the slide style, but more like within the bowl. And I kind of wanted to do more of like the old school, like above the coping kind of way. But like he had done his Instagram video and he explained it in like 30 seconds, something crazy like that. And I just watched that a couple times. And after a few weeks, and I learned how to do it kind of like, you know, you learn a trick to do it your own way. Like for me, this works this way and whatnot. But it was really cool to see that. And um, yeah, there's a lot of really good people out there right now. It's so cool to watch all these ramps getting put up. It's crazy. Yes, it really is. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I it's been a pleasure, man. It's great to finally talk to you. And I'm excited to see where this goes. Again, you can... What's uh what's your handle one more time so people can find you? Uh, okay, the best way to find me is the YouTube channel Chris Genau, which I think um, Michael will put up for you in written letters on the screen. Definitely. <laughs> and um, nosuperman.com, and my blog, and then Instagram no Superman Chris. But you can also find me on there if you just type in my name Chris Genau. It's been a pleasure, man. I'm looking forward to seeing where your journey goes, and I'm excited to see the videos. Thanks. Thank you so, so much. I'm also looking forward to where Work for Avocados um, works next and what's next in your life and YouTube channel, therefore. Likewise, man. Hopefully we'll, we'll cross paths one day. We're gonna, I hope I so. I want to surf that river wave in Munich one day. I want to come up there. <laughs> right awesome. on, man. We well, have a good afternoon, dude. Goodbye.